Hi there. Yesterday while I was out on a 600 kilometer ride on my 2018 Honda Goldwing DCT airbag model, it turned over 100,000 kilometers. I did a 50,000 kilometer review video that I posted on YouTube and so I thought I'd do a 100,000 kilometer one now. I've uh, been loving this uh, DCT transmission. I think it uh, works great. I love the way it shifts. Um, it's nice and smooth, does what you want it to do when you think you want to do it yourself uh, because it does learn how you ride and uh, there's been no problems with this bike. Uh, the reliability and everything has been fantastic. One thing that happened when the bike was about 30,000 kilometers in here where it shows the N and Tour, it was showing the square boxes with stars inside is how I've heard it described. And what happened is I was in fourth gear, went around a corner to the right, then it quick left and then uphill and shifted down to third. And then it was stuck in third. It wouldn't go anywhere from there. I pulled over, shut off the bike, started it up again, and it was showing those four boxes with the stars. So when that happened, I thought I'm gonna initialize the DCT. Uh, which is a quick procedure uh, you can find out how to do that online if you don't know how and i did that and then it was fine and it's been fine since absolutely no problem with the transmission at all and uh, that was the only time it did that there was a time when i had a little bit of clicking in the lifters and so i took it in and i had it professionally adjusted at the honda dealer uh, shortly after it came back, um, not as not as loud, but it came back a little bit. Anyways, it's been absolutely the same ever since, you know, the last 50,000 plus kilometers have not changed in the way of the ticking at all, and it's not that bad. So, was it worth adjusting? Maybe, maybe not, but it's done. People are always wondering about tire life and brake life. So on this bike, it came with Bridgestones and I'm still running the Bridgestones, which I really like the tires for the way that they grip the road and the longevity seems to be fine with me. Um, the front tire is lasting about 25,000 kilometers and the rear is about 21,000 kilometers. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not complaining at all. Uh, it seems like the rear brake pads may be about 44,000 kilometers and the front is a little less, you know, say maybe 40,000 kilometers and both sides are left and right are different lengths of time but they're similar so I'll turn the camera around and walk around the bike and show you a few things here's a quick shot of the bike itself so starting at the front here you can see my mount ram mount there for the phone then just below it I've got the CB cluster I do have the CB radio on this bike. Uh, of course, I put on the uh, Kyriakin ISO grips. They're just slip-on covers over top of the stock grips. The heat comes through just fine, not an issue at all. Some people might have worried about that, but no, it's been great. I use CarPlay, and I find that I really like using the Waze GPS app, as well as for my music, I use the TELUS Music Stingray. And I know that uh, sometimes you could do like a Sirius or whatever, but you have to pay for that monthly. The TELUS I have on my TV, and so therefore it's free on my phone. It does use data, but that's about it. And I have unlimited data. The phone mount used to be on the right side, but I took it off, moved it over. And then on the right side here, I've got my display and controller for my dash camera setup. By the way, my dash camera setup here is HFK and it is a dual front and rear lens. I'll just quickly show you, come around the front here. You can see the front lens is there. And we'll whip around the back. And there is the back one there. And just behind it, you see I've got a couple of switches on that switch block. Those are running my six driving lights. 
and of course my cup got to have my coffee cup holder or water bottle holder uh, depending on what I want the airbag model so I did have the seat customized to suit me a little bit more it's got gel inside it tapered down the front edges in here and then here we added about an inch and a half to two inches of foam to move me forward and I love the backrest and of course I put on the 2020 grab rails which come in really handy for my wife the other thing is is when I go to put it on the center stand I find it's really nice to have that grab rail to hold on to I prefer to use the CB radio on group rides I find that with the Cena mesh which I have the Cena when I'm on mesh you hear everybody coughing or sneezing or whatever and there is a way to mute your mic so if they mute their mic I don't hear that anymore and if I mute my mic then they don't hear me the issue that I have with that is that if you do that and you're running down the road and there's some sort of an emergency that you want to let out to the rest of the riders that there's a big pothole on the left hand side that you might miss or you know a little bit of dirt or something if you have to click on your headset for the mic to come on have the mic come on and then say what you need to say it's not as quick as just reaching for your ptt trigger and saying rock on the road or whatever uh, i find that that would be way easier and it is easier for me so i installed the cigarette lighter and a couple of red auxiliary switches wind deflectors there baker belt headlight protectors you see my driving lights I've got the square one and then the round one down below the one below is Pia the middle one is run D as in the letter D and then the top one is Cree and it's a yellow light, not just a lens. And they're all LED and they're awful bright. I do have Centromatic on front and rear. Little Kuriak and Chrome. Extra turn signal there. Another extra turn signal there. Another turn signal there. That's just a reflector. Then I've got the Rivco flip out highway pegs. I really like them. And I've got a knockoff brand of the Kuriakin floorboard. This here is the Kuriakin brake pedal cover that I put on the brake pedal that I got with these. They do flip up. And you can see I mounted some titanium on the bottom for scraping. It sparks up a little bit going around the corners. The throttle boss. The only Honda Goldwing SE Sport that you will see out there. I just liked the idea of making my own self-declared SE because Honda never did it. I installed these helmet locks with the hangers. You just get in a little bit closer there. Off of the 2001 to 2017 Honda Goldwing, Fred Harmon does have a video on YouTube about how to install them. I've also got extra lights right there. Those are turn signals that are hyper light, really bright LEDs. And then down here, these here are run, brake, and signal light. I used to have them on my Harley and they're a Harley Davidson product. And I just spliced them in. On this bike, what I did is I hooked up a trailer harness, but I do not have a trailer hitch. 
I just run all my extra lights through the trailer harness instead of running it through the uh, bike's CAN bus. And the trailer harness does have its own isolator. Of course, I do have the Honda trunk rack with the Honda light. And what I've done is I've just hooked up that light as a brake light only. So when I hit the brakes, all of a sudden there's another light that comes on. So a stock original 2018 Goldwing trunk. And by the way, I do have a video showing how to do this. I have two full face helmets in my trunk and it's not an issue. You just have to do it a certain way. So if you look at this one, it's right there is the opening that your head would go in. That's the windshield top is over here and the back. Then this one here, you drop it in and then you put it to the side and you just kind of wiggle it so that the nose is inside the opening here. That's what you want to do and then close it and it's done. The other thing I should make mention of is that I don't have a lot else inside my trunk, but I do have my 300 watt hog wired amplifier for my stereo right there in the helmet just touches it, but I can still get two helmets even with that in there. And you can see here, I had to cut out the back for a little bit of venting for my Rockford Fosgate high performance speakers. And this thing sounds awesome. And again, I do have a video on YouTube that shows how I installed it and what I installed.